has been said already, the theme of the few days that we're sharing together has been said to be through the doorway to the absence of illusion. But we're going to begin with the ending and see what happens for us. But first of all, there's a little story to put our minds in the right place, so to speak. And then it's that anecdote about the time when there was a, an earthquake happening in the monastery. And after the shaking tremor had been completed and was over, the master said to his students, you see, this earthquake gave me the possibility of demonstrating to you how it is to be imperturbable as you saw me drinking a glass of water while the earthquake was happening. And all the students looked at him and said, But Master, that wasn't water, it was soy sauce. <laughs> There's a story about a being who'd been in a monastery for many, many years. But he was greatly revered, even though he was the one who undertook those tasks that were thought to be just menial. Cleaning the pots after the cooking had been done sweeping the cloisters, and so on. But he was greatly loved and looked up to because he was <coughs> imperturbable. He always was at the right place at the right time, doing whatever was needed in that moment. But one day, one of the monks asked, him, what was life like for you before you became a monk? And in the first person he answered, I was a great achiever. I was never satisfied with life, always trying to do something more, to find success or satisfaction, gratification, but to no avail. Everything I undertook brought no satisfaction until I reached a point where I became suicidal. I had no recourse but to enter this establishment. And when I did, and I came before the abbess, she interviewed me at great length, and then she welcomed me into the monastery. But before I left her, I asked her, what should my spiritual practice be? And she said to me a strange thing. Always enter a door completely. When I left her, I couldn't understand what it was that she was meaning. I was expecting her to give me some high-flown spiritual practice. And I thought perhaps being old she'd become a little senile. But then, as I started to undertake the routine of the monastery, each time I entered a door, it seemed that it was whispering to me. So I began to listen very carefully, and I heard 
that the doors were saying, it is all empty. It is all empty. And as I pondered on these words in every door I came to, was saying the same thing. So I began to think to myself, oh, perhaps this is meaning that I'm in the right place, giving up all those useless endeavors to achieve, to be something important. And I began to feel a little gratification. But then the words of the doors became louder. It is all empty. It is all empty. And I began to realize that this wasn't it. So my gratification left me. And I thought that perhaps if I endeavored to absolutely fill myself with the rituals and the routines of the monastery, that this would allow me to move into a place where at least I could feel some peace. But every door I entered spoke to me ever more loudly. It is empty. It is all empty. So even as I began to feel that I had settled into the routine, the rituals, the way of life of the monastery, that this wasn't it. It is all empty. Every door I entered and it became louder and louder and louder until even the thought that settling into the monastery life was not it. What could I do? Then I thought, meditation. I'll sink myself in meditation, wholly and completely. And I did. And I began to feel a great sense of peace. And I thought to myself, this is it. And I began to feel superior, superior to all the others. Look at me. I'd achieved peace, but the doors spoke ever more loudly. It is all empty. It is all empty. And I began to realize that this gratification, this feeling of being superior, was my mind seeking to become something, to hold on to something. So even meditation lost that sense of peace. And even quiet gratification and satisfaction. And still the doors spoke to me. It is all empty. I became desperate. I began to climb through windows so that I wouldn't have to go through a door. And here again, those words. It is all empty. But I became desperate. I could not bear any more. I wanted to leave. I wanted to find a cliff to jump off. But as I ran out of the monastery, there in front of me was the monastery gate. I could not. I could not go through one more door and hear those words now in every direction. 
it is all empty. So I stood hearing those words, not just ringing from the door of the monastery, but all around me, through me, in me, resonated the words. It is all empty. My mind could not bear any more to hear and to try to find meaning in the words. It is all empty. And now there is not emptiness, nor without emptiness. There is not peace, nor without peace. There is not pain or without pain. There is not existence nor without existence. So emptiness no longer has meaning. Let's see, in the several days that we have together, whether we can experience what it is that's meant by through the doorway to the absence.